so this demonstration starts from the beginning so I have here uh, in one folder I have the raw data of this uh, project there is the point cloud file in fast binary format it uh, could be uh, also in last format and then there are those trajectory files uh, coming out from DJI Terra pre-processing software so all these files could be uh, coming directly from uh, that DJI Terra uh, drone uh, uh, processing software but I have now converted this uh, point cloud file the fast binary format before this demonstration then I have here uh, open uh, Spatex with Terascan UAV version installed so let's load that data into the program and that's quite easy with the uh, project initialization uh, wizard I select here drone project and new and define uh, name for the project then I define the laser point cloud file I have it in this folder but now when I, it's not in last format I have to change uh, the dialog to show all file formats and then the trajectory file this one and then we have to define the uh, projection system of the point cloud file and I have now this finish one use in this project and then we still need to define to which uh, location we are about to store our files so I will create here a new folder like this and then we are fine and click OK and the software initializes the project it creates here a blank um, uh, design file reads in point cloud it's here and it read also in those uh, flight trajectories and we can check also those uh, from here so now we can see those as red lines going through our point cloud and we could also show little uh, arrows there pointing the travel direction and change the visualization settings of those trajectories and now I quickly will draw draw these trajectories into the design file so that we can see all the time where those are I will rename my layer to describe what I have there like this and now let's check to the folder what the program actually did so first we had only this raw data folder it is now unchanged here but uh, the software when we created this project folder it created here some files so this UAV demo 
.spx is the design file which contains all the uh, CAD platform elements and information and then we have this trajectory folder where the software stores all, all the uh, trajectory information uh, along the project. So the software did not uh, save the point cloud file. It's still unsaved, so let's save save it also. And I will create here another new folder to store laser point cloud files. So I will, uh, along this uh, demonstration, I will save different uh, versions of my point cloud and name those with numbering and I will store all those into the same laser folder. So if we check a bit this point cloud uh, first about classes of uh, points. Now all points are in default class so we have about half million uh, I mean 55 million uh, points there and all those are in default class we have here some other class classes but all points are currently in default class and we seem to have here some forest some terrain uh, this area where where we do not have points it's a lake so we have haven't got many responses from water area or water surface but here some some uh, points have been collected from the water area or some reflections have been there but mostly the water area is missing points we also have uh, color information stored on those points so now we see a bit better so this is the water area here is forest, some road some cottages we can check the density of the point cloud so now focus on the middle areas between different flight lines so now we see that here in the middle of two flight lines we have higher density area so where two flight lines overlap we get a bit higher density of points and in later later uh, work later in this demonstration in this processing workflow we will balance this so that we have uh, quite equal point density all over our area then there is echo information but now all points seem to be only the first or only echo off at each point then we could color points by elevation so now this is absolute elevation so that uh, it's not elevation from ground level but absolute elevation then we can visualize points by intensity now we can see some features for example here the paint markings along the road distinguish quite well and we can also see some paths going through 
the forest and then there is line information so this tells which flight line do those points belong to and now our all points are we have only one uh, flight line or trajectory here so all points are paired with it but we will also change that during the processing workflow and then there is still time visualization mode and now this is quite quick and handy tool to uh, figure out how our data has been collected so we can for example see here uh, these two two different flight lines without uh, cutting this trajectory into separate parts and then there is vegetation index visualization and now uh, this is visual band difference so from RGB colors our color information does not include uh, near infrared uh, band but this is from RGB colors and one could define own vegetation indices in the settings also so in this visualization uh, green points the greener the points the more probable it should be that there is vegetation and if it's gray or uh, less green it should be something not organic material or not vegetation at least but this is now quickly shown what is the state when you process your laser data DJI uh, L1 laser data with uh, TerraSolid UAV uh, project initialization wizard and next we will continue with the processing actual processing wizard of the data so we will go now through different processing steps uh, we could run all these steps at once but now I will go through these different ones uh, one by one and then we will see a bit what the result will be between different steps so first is uh, splitting trajectories so the idea at this point is to cut this trajectory so that we get all individual parts separate so for example we want to get this one this one and this and these four individual lines separate and we want to remove these uh, parts here for example so that uh, because here uh, data collection quality is most likely worse than in these straight areas so we want to drop this out and remove the data from those parts to keep only the uh, good quality data in processing workflow so let's run the processing tool with these settings 
And now we see that our trajectory was cut in the four pieces. I will hide the drawings I did earlier and now draw these lines again. Uh, let me change the layer first and now draw with line coloring. So now we get here individual uh, trajectory parts and we could also visualize by those lines. So we have here colors matching those different parts of the trajectory. And here is some parts uh, with this uh, blue color in strange places. That's because uh, all points were initially matched with uh, trajectory number one. And now this uh, part of trajectory uh, has the num has the number one. And when these other parts have been cut, the number one has remained for these points because those do not have any uh, new trajectory. But we will in later steps remove those those parts from the uh, data. So let's go to the next step. So next is cut overlap and that includes uh, the removal of excess trajectory parts or those points with those do not have any trajectory and we could change we could keep those points or classify those to separate class but I will now in this demonstration delete those points that do not have trajectory and also delete those points from the overlapping areas. So let's change this visualization a bit. I will change the, the, the density visualization so that we can see the change uh, that appears when we cut overlap. So we are now about to remove So the process finished and now first the density was like this and now I have to update the density coloring to uh, show the change after processing. So now we see that it's much more balanced between these flight lines here in the border areas. So for example here there is this slight uh, uh, lighter line which points out that there is higher density of points but otherwise this seems quite balanced, seems to be quite balanced in, in this area. And then the next step in processing workflow is to smoothen and smoothen the point cloud and remove noise. So the smoothing means that that we are uh, in areas where there seems to be hard surfaces. For example, here on these roofs, there is some some surface, but it has some noise. So this step uh, tries to smoothen so that those points lay uh, closer to the actual surface and we are about to remove noisy points from the data. So let's see that one. Or actually I will save, save my points also in this, at this step before continuing.
I will also say also save the uh, design file. And rename that one layer where we put those. Uh, new trajectories and I will also save uh, save my view settings to the CAD or this SPX file. And now let's see how this step will change. So focus now on these areas here and look how how the processing changes those. So now the processing finished and I would say that uh, the point cloud follows a bit closer the actual surface. Here are some some points that are a bit uh, off and those are now classified to different class so those have a bit different color when we are displaying with uh, class coloring so here when we check statistics some of our points are now classified as noise. So those are mostly in places where we have surfaces and or we could also look at the first view and see the overall. So in these water areas there is much noise and the uh, software ha has removed it. And here in the road surface and this roof surface areas there is also some. Okay, then let's continue with the workflow. So next step is the thin points to inactive. So the idea at this step is to balance the uh, even more the point density throughout the point cloud and in some later uh, later steps it doesn't matter to have that dense point, point cloud that we have but we can remove some points to uh, or reclassify those away from our processing and run those automatic tools to the uh, remaining points and then copy the result from uh, the processed points to this inactive class. And, uh, and get as good result as we could have when having all the points but uh, save much computational resources in the processing. So let's run this step. So now we can see that most of our points, because we have such a uh, dense point cloud, most of our points have been moved to the inactive class. And if we check the statistics, we have only 5 million points remaining in our default class, which we are about the process, so that's uh, ten, about 10% ten of our original point cloud. Quite many points are now in inactive class and then uh, there are those noise points also. But let's uh, let's now hide these noise and inactive points from our visualization. 
and let's continue with the workflow. So next uh, step in the processing is the classifier ground and here is only one setting so this uh, this algorithm selects some points from the uh, point cloud uh, to be used as initial points from for uh, ground classification so this defines how densely we select uh, initial points and this should be a uh, larger value than how large uh, holes we should have in our uh, ground classification so for example if we have here some big building this should exceed the dimensions of that building let's run this ground classification step so now the algorithm finished and let's check uh, it uh, the ground classification routine first classified some low points so this is again uh, one noise removal phase then it classified about half million points to the ground and also some low vegetation and now we could check one nice uh, visualization mode so I'm changing this color by the shading and visualizing only ground points so now here we can see the surface model of this area and this is a bit uh, more s it a bit more uh, resource exhaustive uh, visualization so I do not uh, recommend it recommend using it with uh, very big point clouds but this 5 million is still quite okay size for my machine and actually now we can see quite nicely why it is always the, uh, important to also check uh, the result of automatic processes so here near this lake we have some small sauna cottage and it is now classified as ground because the roof of this cottage uh, extends directly from the ground level so I will change the visualization a bit so here we have now those low vegetation points and some ground points but we want to move those back to the default class so I will now uh, run some manual classification tools to uh, move those some points back to the uh, our processing so from ground and low vegetation we will now move bo points back to the uh, default class and this classify above line uh, routine is now quite handy for us and we can dynamically see the change here in the tin model so now this seems a bit better and I will save the point cloud again so that we do not uh, lose any work if we do something 
something wrong in the later and need to go back. So then let's have a look at the next step. So next will be classify by height from ground. So we will uh, divide our point cloud on the uh, different elevation in the walls and this visualization is most likely then quite familiar for people who have used uh, point clouds processed uh, and shared by some public authorities or something like that. So let's see what happens. I will change a bit uh, the visualization settings. and display all points but that noise and inactive class and then let's process process those, those points so now this uh, software computed distance from ground and did the classification so we can see that here uh, are those uh, close the ground points, then the dark uh, green is low vegetation and then after that comes medium vegetation and high vegetation is uh, then all that is left after those two classes. And now when the software also computed distance to the ground, we can also have uh, this one quite nice visualization mode uh, colored by distance from ground. So uh, now here all above ground objects are uh, colored or visualized by their distance from the ground and close to ground points are visualized by their intensity. So the coloring scheme is here uh, now adjusted so that it should quite well point out, out uh, buildings and vegetation and this color by intensity uh, helps to see details or features in the ground level. And then uh, the next step is classify above ground features. So we will, with uh, grouping, uh, find all individual objects and classify those groups to different above ground uh, classes. So If we have a look on the tool, here are different classes that we can find out from the data. Our data does not now because we are in the middle of forest and we don't do not have here uh, any cars or here here is actually one seems to be one car over there. Let's check. Yeah, it, it probably is one car, but otherwise here is stuff belonging to these classes and not to pole class. So well, let's classify stuff to this these different classes.
So now we can check uh, the new classification. So we seem to have here uh, these red points. Those are now the uh, building roof class. Then there is vegetation, uh, mostly trees, and then uh, this one yellow here is car in car class. So if we co go through these different classes, so we have building roofs, we have some uh, roof structures there, we have some wall structures, we have trees all over the area, we have that one car and some false positives also. And vegetation, that should be some lower vegetation than trees. And overall most of our points are still in that uh, inactive class. Then we have quite many points in tree class. And those are now uh, the last step classified points from high vegetation to those individual classes. And then we have still uh, two steps left. Uh, those are copy result to inactive points. So we will classify if there is some uh, object nearby these inactive, so these gray points, we will classify those using the uh, classification from previous steps. And then there is also copy result to noise points. So uh, from if if there are if there is some uh, object nearby those uh, noise points which we removed in the early steps then if there is some vegetation or trees nearby those points, those will be reclassified to those classes. And it's quite probable that some of noise points uh, are close to vegetation or tree, because trees and vegetation quite uh, often result to some noisy, noisy looking uh, stuff in the point cloud. and those are then removed, but now we have chance to uh, move those points back to the original or uh, or the, the classes that those belong to. But let's see. So now uh, the routine seem to uh, copy the re uh, classification result to most of the points. So none of our points anymore uh, is in the default class. All points are uh, moved to some other classes. Quite many those, uh, of those uh, noisy points or inactive points were in low vegetation, so most probably some ground or low vegetation hits. And then quite many trees also. And the noise, noisy points seem to uh, be mostly remain, or most of the noise points remain in the noise, as we also looked at most, quite many points were close to these surface areas, so those remained in those classes. But uh, this was uh, the UAV wizard uh, gone through quickly and all this stuff you can do with a few clicks.